Hello, and welcome to Pittsburgh City Council Standing Committee's meeting for Wednesday, September 18, 2019. My name is Kim Clark Baskin, and I'm your Deputy City Clerk. With us today, we have our sign language interpreter, Nick Miller. The following is legislation up for preliminary approval by Pittsburgh City Council. This morning, we have a pre-agenda, Bill number 2032. It is a resolution appointing Kevin Paulus as the Director of the Office of Management and Budget. Finance and Law Committee, Reverend Burgess is the Chair. We have new papers, Bill number 2020. Resolution further amending, Resolution 863 of 2018, effective January 1, 2019, as amended, entitled, Resolution adopting and approving the 2019 capital budget and the 2019 Community Development Block Grant Program and the 2019 through 2024 Capital Improvement Program by amending various CDBG program line items, adding J.D. Edwards financial information and authorizing a subsequent, a subsequent agreement for operational and administrative expenses, maintenance, purchase of equipment, and or rehabilitation of neighborhood facilities on behalf of the residents of the City of Pittsburgh. Bill number 2021, resolution further amending resolution 796 of 2013, effective December 19, 2013, as amended, entitled, resolution adopting and approving the 2014 capital budget and the 2014 Community Development Block Grant Program by reducing refinished gym floor by $64,072.33, splash zones by $20,146.47, and increasing ramp and public sidewalk program by $84,218.80. Bill number 2022, resolution further amending resolution 858 of 2014, effective January 1, 2015, as amended, entitled, resolution adopting and approving the 2015 capital budget and the 2015 community development block grant program by reducing emergency sheltering by $13.40 and increasing ramp and public sidewalks by $13.40. Bill number 2023, resolution further amending, resolution 816 of 2015, effective December 18, 2015, as amended, entitled, resolution adopting and approving the 2016 capital budget and the 2016 community development block grant program by reducing park reconstruction by $10, pool rehabilitation by $10,000, and increasing ramp and public sidewalk by $10,010. Bill number 2024, resolution authorizing the issuance of a warrant in favor of Curtin and Hefner LLP in an amount not to exceed $15,000 $122.72 for professional legal services and expert advice regarding building owners and managers litigation. Bill number 2025, resolution authorizing the purchase of certain property by the city of Pittsburgh in lieu of eminent domain in order to advance city's proposed permanent closure of the Timberland Bridge. Public Works Committee, Mrs. Kel Smith is chair. We have bill number 1637. Resolution authorizing the mayor and the directors of the Department of Parks and the Department of Public Works to enter into a lease agreement with the Pittsburgh Ballet Theater for a portion of real property located on Liberty Avenue between 29th and 30th Streets. Bill number 2002. Resolution vacating a portion of Gallatin Street in the 10th Ward, 7th Council District. Bill number 2035, 
Resolution Amending Resolution 507 of 2019, vacating a portion of Colwell Street and portions of Our Way in a third ward, 6th Council District, by extending the expiration date of the payment from the property owners to the Treasury of the City of Pittsburgh from 60 days to 105 days from the effective date of the resolution, dated August 1, 2019. This bill is sponsored by Councilman Daniel Lavelle. Intergovernmental Affairs Committee, Mr. O'Connor is the chair. We have a deferred paper, 2018-0983. Resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Finance to execute a quick claim deed or deeds and any other necessary or appropriate documents, agreements, and instruments conveying as is all of the city's right, title, and interest, if any, in designated city-owned properties to the Urban Redevelopment Authority for consideration of $1 each. Bill number 2000, resolution adopting plan revision to the City of Pittsburgh's Official Sewage Facilities Plan for Light of Life Ministries, Inc. at 234 Voltley Street at the recently subdivided parcel in Pittsburgh 15212. Bill number 2028, resolution authorizing the Mayor and the Office of Management and Budget to renew the non-exclusive license agreement with the Federal General Services Administration for the Veterans Affair Highland Drive Campus at 7180 Highland Drive for limited use and to conduct due diligence pursuant to the application approved by the Federal Emergency Management Agency and the Department of Justice to acquire the property for law enforcement and emergency management purposes. Bill number 2029. Resolution adopting plan revision to the City of Pittsburgh's Official Sewage Facilities Plan for the 201 Arsenal Phase II Residential Land Development Project located at 135 39th Street. In Bill number 2030, resolution adopting plan revision to the City of Pittsburgh's Official Sewage Facilities Plan for the St. Peter's Residence Project located at 500 Lockhart Street in the city of Pittsburgh. That concludes the reading of the legislation up for preliminary approval. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Okay, good morning everyone and welcome to our pre-agenda item here uh, before we go into our regular standing committee meeting. Today is Wednesday, September the 18th, 2019. I am Councilman Krause. I will be chairing this pre-interview. Uh, we are here to interview Kevin Tallis uh, to become director of our Office of Management and Budget. But before we do that, Madam Clerk, may I please have the purpose of Bill 2032? Bill 2032. Resolution appointing Kevin Paulus as the director of the Office of Management and Budget. Thank you, uh, Madam Clerk. Let the record reflect we're being joined by Councilwoman Harris. Kevin, good morning. Can I call you Kevin? I can, right? Good morning. Good. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? So um, just uh, to sort of set the ground rules, it's really very easy uh, here what would like to do is just hear a little bit about yourself members clearly have your uh, your resume tell us a little bit about yourself your experience some members will have some questions or comments for you but we'll uh, give you the table first okay sure. thank you um, first one thanks to you council for giving me the opportunity to inter interview this morning um, and also the mayor and chief gilman um, for the confidence in my ability to nominate me for this position um, a little bit about my background. Uh, I was a DPW seasonal laborer for two summers while in college. Um, it really helped me understand the frontline operations and gave me valuable experience um, it, with seeing the challenges that DPW faces um, on a day-to-day -day basis that would actually help me uh, when I was hired as a budget analyst in, in 2012, um, which is where my role was focused on the operating budget. Um, 
during uh, my tenure as a budget analyst, I had uh, analyst duties for the Department of Public Works, Department of Law, and the Human Relations Commission. Um, in 2014, I, was, I moved to a senior budget analyst um, where I kept the analyst duties for DPW, um, but swapped um, HRC and law for Parks and Rec and City Planning. Um, I was pro promoted to the Operating B Budget Manager in 2017 where I kept DPW and Parks and Rec, um, but then was added for uh, the Department of Mo Mobility and Infrastructure um, when that department was created. Um, as recently as 2018, I moved into the Assistant Director of the Operating Budget Capacity. Um, when the previous Assistant Director left the city, um, it was there where I worked on higher level initiatives um, as well as financial costing for union negotiations. Um, you know, our office is high functioning and, and has a dedicated team that we really have a team first mentality. Uh, I truly love working with the team each and every day. It makes it fun to come into work. Um, we touch all aspects of, of city government with every department um, citywide, which makes the day-to-day -day operations very unique and, um, and fun um, day in and day out. Um, you know, we've faced a lot of turnover, turnover within the past year and a half, um, but we're able to operate efficiently um, during that time, and I truly believe it's because of everyone's commitment in that office that we were able to do so. Um, some of the things that we've accomplished while I've been employed by the city um, was that we successfully exited Act 47, which was huge for us. Um, faced a lot of challenges while we were in that, um, and it's exciting to move forward. Um, we've invested in our infrastructure to allocate more funds to our city assets so that our employees work in a safe environment and a higher functioning environment. Um, we've invested in our core services by bolstering staff um, to help improve over overall operations. Um, I was recently involved with the, the most recent bond rating agency presentation where we received a credit rating increase, which I think is a huge step for the city. I think it outlines you know, what we're trying to practice with fiscal responsibility is huge and we are making strides to get better. Um, and just a couple of things that I would like to focus on or continue to focus on um, in this role would be you know, improving the, fi the city's financial outlook um, by continuing the financial practices that Act 47 implemented while it was here. Um, but also while delivering on core services, it's, you know, it's, it's hard. You have to find a healthy balance between, between both of them. Um, that's in, this includes growing our fund balance to keep it over the 10% threshold of budgeted expenditures, um, borrowing responsibly so we can continue to invest in our infrastructure, um, increasing the pension fund. We all know that's a huge, uh, a huge hurdle for us. Um, and eliminating operating deficits. If we can eliminate operating deficits, um, have operate, healthy operating results, we can allocate more, more funds to the pension fund, grow our fund balance, um, allocate more funds to our infrastructure. So that's really the base of everything. Um, Want to continue to work with city departments to help operate you know, uh, more efficiently and effectively. Um, but anyone who's gotten to know me during my duration uh, at the city knows that I'm a big proponent of the, of the, the relationship building. Um, without relationships, it, it makes it much harder to operate efficiently. Um, if we work together instead of against each other, we can move forward to help make the city stronger. Um, and I'd like to close with just saying, I, you know, I'm looking forward to working with the council members, the council budget office, the mayor, and, and other city departments moving forward. Great. I, I wasn't aware you had such a broad swath of experience in all the different departments. That was very, uh, very good to hear. Yeah. Councilwoman Harris, I'll give you the floor. Sure. Uh, thank you for your willingness to serve and uh, just like to ask you a couple questions on on the bonds uh, and you want to be fiscal responsible, right? Um, I understand that we're, I think we're up to around $200 million in bonds that have been taken out in the last five years. And that's being pushed out, which will uh, actually increase what we're paying. And I understand that uh, the administration wants to take out another $60 million next year. Um, that, that is an awful lot of bonds in um, five years six. Uh, my concern is what's going to happen then. Right now, 
uh, from where we were, if, if you look at it, this is the lowest year that we have uh, on what we're paying. So it, it's like a $52 million increase in a budget if you look at where we were and where we are now. Mm -hmm. uh, my concern is by the rate that we're spending in uh, bonds are usually uh, spent on um, things that will last the years of the bond, right. pushing that out, uh, and asphalting, that's not something that really um, is uh, something that's going to last 10, 15 years. Matter of fact, some of the streets that were asphalted last year actually are a problem now already in one year. Um, we used to have an asphalt plant and we, have, we also have portable. Uh, there are portable, we don't have them, asphalt plants where you can move them. Um, what do you see here? as far as being fiscally responsible, um, where are you at with keep upping the bonds? And right now is our good time, and the way it's going, um, the city's really gonna have problems in the future. And you don't, you know, you might still be there uh, five years from now. Uh, what's going to happen. So I, I totally understand your concerns. Our office is always um, hands-on with the planning of, you know, what our bond um, issuances look like, not only now, but in the future. Um, you're right. We have <clears throat> hit a low with our debt service payment and fa have fallen under that 12% threshold um, that we're trying to maintain. Um, you're absolutely right there. Um, but while we are planning to go out for another bond, there will be um, older bonds that will be coming off our, our plate um, in the near future um, that will allow us to have more flexibility and drop our, fund, our debt ratio even lower. Um, it, again, it goes back to the healthy balance of trying to maintain our infrastructure and invest in the infrastructure so that it lasts. Um, we're continuing to try to increase pay go amounts, but if we can only do that if we have positive operating results. So everything is kind of intertwined. Um, but I will say, uh, moving forward with the current plan, we are um, anticipating staying under our debt threshold. Um, and throughout that time, there will be older bonds um, that will be coming off the plate because we will be um, repaying them and, and uh, they will be hitting the end of their useful life. For now. Correct. But, but taking more bonds out when we're at a low as we are and not really using the money for infrastructure, city steps, um, uh, just police stations, buildings, uh, divisions, fire stations, paramedic stations, um, and utilizing that for things that are not is that fiscally responsible yeah i mean it's all again it goes back to finding that healthy balance to try to accommodate and accomplish as much as possible we, we always have eyes on that um and and i will say that we are we we are planning to be fiscally responsible moving forward and anticipate staying under that death debt threshold um so that it does not exceed that 12 percent um number and I think that's huge um, for the city um, you know as we move forward with through the plan we can always alter it um, as more years roll on and as we um, realize some operating uh, results um, to hopefully you know increase paygo and and not have to go out for those bond funds too using bond funds for things that don't last 10 or 15 years, is that fiscally responsible? 
I'm always work. I'm, I'm always um, willing to work with the capital team um, to get my my hands um, more on the process. Um, I will say I've predominantly been focused on the operating budget throughout my tenure. Mm -hmm. um, so there is there are things that I have to learn more about with capital. Um, the capital and operating budget are intertwined and work hand in hand. Um, but in this new role, I'm really looking forward to understanding more about it, working with our capital team um, so that I can be more well versed in it. Um, so that's something that I will continue to monitor or mo monitor moving forward. Okay. And I think that's something that really needs to be done because the taxpayers cannot afford their under 50% of those that are paying taxes on their properties uh, and with the nonprofits having more, uh, that could be a tax increase, which a lot of people that live in this city can't afford. So I would hope that you start looking into what's being spent um, what bonds are being spent on because whatever they are should last at least 15 years. So um, with, get your feet really wet there. <laughs> okay. Will do. Okay, Councilwoman, thank you. Okay, Kevin, I'd like to talk just a little bit about the 2020 budget um, and uh, coming out of state receivership. So one of the, the more, more difficult and challenging um, aspects of being a member of council, uh, at least for me, I, for the first 10 years I was here, is the fact that we were under state receivership. And the council was, was rather limited in, in the input that we could have on the budget. Um, last year uh, was the first year that council uh, and the mayor's office worked in it, what I will say, a, a, incredibly cooperative manner um, to produce a budget that uh, met our priorities, but um, also uh, kept that sense of balance that you refer to any number of times. Uh, and that is my hope to continue that same kind of a, uh, as you said, relationship uh, when we craft the budget this year. Um, and I've had some preliminary meetings with uh, uh, Chief of Staff Gilman uh, to talk a little bit about what my priorities are. Uh, and one of the things you talked about was infrastructure. Uh, and infrastructure is broadly defined. Um, uh, I'd like to talk a little bit more about the importance of infrastructure as it relates to our neighborhoods. Um, and um, uh, especially uh, land management, uh, vacant properties, um, and what has really been uh, our inability to really come to grips with, um, with the amount of property that we have. I, um, I try to do this every community meeting I'm at where someone comes up to talk about how problematic a prop property is and that the city owns it. And I do my best to correct it that in most instances, it's not that we own it, it's that we inherited it that someone has walked away from it, or someone has passed on, the children don't want it, they've moved out of state, we can't find it, or it's an LLC that is in you know, Kansas somewhere. Um, and so we struggle with um, properties that we have inherited and in trying to reinvent these properties and reestablish them and make them contributing as opposed to um, uh, non-contributing. So um, that, that is going to be one of my primary focuses this year on the budget and how we, um, how we, and I understand we, we, you know, we may need to ease into this and craft a five-year plan and, and if, you know, the gods are with me and, and I get through November, I do get to be here for four more years. Um, and that really is going to be my focus of those years. What are we going to do to begin um, uh, dealing with our infrastructure, but as it relates to the day-to-day -day neighborhood, the people that call me that say, you know, this property is vacant or this one is overgrown or we can't find the owner here or someone's squatting here. Um, and I uh, truly appreciate the challenges of, of being a city that was built for 600 or 700,000. We're now 300,000. I do get that and I do appreciate that, but I can't tell anybody that anymore. 
<laughs> we, it's the reality of the situation, but we have to come to terms with it. I love that when uh, the mayor presents his budget, he talks about the budgets are the soul of a city and that they reflect what our priorities are. And I, I truly believe in my heart of hearts, and it's why I ran to sit in this chair, is that our priority is people, first and foremost, above and beyond everything else. It's the people that we're, we're here to represent. Um, and uh, I want to uh, just sort of offer that up to you that in this budget season, I want you to realize that's going to be a real priority for me. And I would like to build that relationship with you and, and to talk about how we can best build a plan uh, that is responsible, you know, that reflects um, our, our uh, fiscal responsibility. God knows I don't ever want to go back there again. I don't think there's anybody on the fifth floor that wants to go back uh, to where we were 12 years ago, 14 years ago. Uh, we want to do right. I think one of our major responsibilities here, Councilwoman has brought this up, is to manage the budget responsibly, manage the public purse responsibly, and get the biggest bang for our bucks and do right by the people that we represent. So, um, uh, and not just, you know, while they're here, but after they leave. You know, uh, the councilwoman was, was um, uh, instrumental uh, in, uh, in when she served as president to help to craft the, the policy around the parking meter revenue and, and sequestering that and putting that towards our pension. Our pension is nowhere near where we need it to be, but it is healthier than it has been in many, many, many years. We are committed to com continuing that and making certain that we do do right by the employees that have uh, uh, you know, served their lives here as employees of the city and, uh, and we have um, offered pension and we want to be honorable and honest in making certain that those are funded. So you know, we have a little bit of belt tightening I suppose to do or priority selecting to do uh, and while we do that, um, uh, you know, I, I just want to be very upfront and forward that my priority in this budget is, is going to be the people um, and the neighborhoods uh, that, uh, that uh, need that TLC that we haven't quite been able to provide in the, in the years past. Right, I, I would agree with you wholeheartedly. Um, I look forward to building the relationship and continuing that, that conversation. Um, I'm as well committed to uh, a, a, the budget meeting like we had uh, last year. It was great. Uh, for this year, um, I think it, it just helps with communication um, and makes everything easier for everyone to be on the same page. Yeah, and I think this year it might take a series of, uh, of those meetings. You know, we had several last year, I know that, and there are meetings scheduled with the administration and members of council to begin discussing right. our right. You know, our sort of baseline priorities. Uh, but, you know, as we go on um, and, uh, you know, um, we, we are thoroughly committed to being responsible stewards, making certain that we don't go back ever again to where we were and at the same time really manage our priorities to be uh, the people in the neighborhoods that we represent. Absolutely. Thanks, Kevin. I appreciate it. Councilman, you had an additional remark? Yeah. <coughs> and uh, since we're at that low, uh, where that would be extra money, um, right now, I think it would be wise to look at, as the Councilman said, um, how hard does Council work to make sure that the pension didn't go to the state, but that extra money is put in just because we have that over the 31 years. Um, we said when that happened that, that we would need to put more money in to the pension. Uh, also, um, employees, uh, we need the workers and I would like you to just take a look at that because um, the uh, super supervisors and assistant supervisors and assistant supervisors aren't out there on the roads doing the job. And um, when you're working with each one, which I assume you're going to be doing with each department, that uh, you take a hard look uh, at the things that the councilman just said. Uh, plus, because we
we should uh, right now is the time to tighten your belt but you do need in the employees that are out there in the divisions uh, the police and I think our police are paid the lowest in Allegheny County right now except for one or two other uh, and hopefully their contract goes pretty good because we could lose a whole lot of them uh, depending on what happens so uh, we need the workers out there people that are doing the job every day, the firefighters, the police, the paramedics, and uh, public works in particular. So um, maybe just take an overall look at everything that's going on there. But the pension, the pension should really have more money thrown in it each year. Yeah, and I will say, um, you know, since this administration has come into office, um, we've been committed to um, funding additional uh, monies, um, and we are c continuing to, um, to to carry that out. Um, not only the minimum the minimum um, obligation um, set forth by the actuaries, but the parking asset, but uh, another amount on top of that as well. But at the rate bonds are being taken out right now, is not fiscally responsible. Thank you. I have one more question. <clears throat> in this digital age in which we live in information, uh, whether it be correct or incorrect, tends to swirl, you know, within seconds and is distributed. And I've got um, hit with this a couple times now, and I, I want to give you the opportunity to correct this, uh, that somehow we have more money than we know what to do with, um, and we're struggling to spend it. Can you kind of correct that for us, please, and, and, and let's kind of put a stop to that rumor um, that's, that's out there? Yeah, um, I, I wish that was the case. Um, we certainly do not. Um, you know, we're constantly ma looking at the fund balance and you know what our revenue actuals are in comparison with our um, expenditures. Um, a lot of uh, some funds are designated um, for specific uses in trust funds and grants and, and whatnot. Um, but as far as the undesignated fund balance, um, that is something that you will you will see on the target budget page that is contained in the budget document um, that that's really our guiding light to um, try to be fiscally responsible um, to make sure that that stays above that 10 percent and we're committed to that absolutely legislatively absolutely right it's law yep. it's not a whim or an idea that we might have or something that we think we need to do we've crafted that into law and it is our responsibility by law to to keep that fund balance yep yeah. yes yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. Councilwoman, do you have anything else you no, want to offer up? Kevin, thanks for being here this morning. Thanks I'm happy for having to me. put you forward. Uh, and we'll vote on Tuesday. Forgive me, Madam Clerk. I, Tuesday, the 24th. Tuesday the 24th. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, Councilwoman, can I have a motion to adjourn? Uh -huh. And I'll second it. Good morning. Welcome to Pittsburgh City Council Standing Committee meeting of Wednesday, September 18th, 2019. Um, our first order of business is public comment. Members of the public who want to come and address council, you'll be giving three minutes. Start off with your name and either address or location. The green light means the start of three minutes. The yellow light means one minute to summarize. The red light means your time has expired. Please relinquish the podium. First speaker, please. Okay, everything. First speaker, please. First speaker, please. It's so Good morning. Thank you. You know, God is good for me to make it on time. Um, I have a lot of personal things to deal with my husband. There's times I have to do things for him. Um, I want to start off today because there's, I mean, I'm really troubled by you as a council because you're not listening to the people. You understand? You're doing what you want to do. But before I say that, I want to say something to you personally, 
Mr. Kraus, Mr. Kraus, I wanted to say you have my condolences about your mother. I can't feel your pain, but there's a loss. You know, we had my mother for 92 years, and when she died and I left her in Allegheny General, I remember riding and just saying, I lost my mom, I got no mom. I didn't even think about my husband or nothing, it's just that I lost my mom. So truly, from the bottom of my heart, I feel for you. Okay, now I'm gonna go on. Ms. Uh, Smith, um, I was personally, you know I live up in Cayley with Irvis, and I'm talking about the cleaning that I'm doing. Well, just the other day, one of the seniors came to me, and this lady walks downtown quite a bit. She does a lot of walking to be the age that she is, because I think she's about my age, in her 70s. But she came to me and she said, thank you, because I've been cleaning where the cars are, that hill. She said, because I saw rats there. I saw rats. And she said, I stopped going that way. I just want to let you know that I am doing the best I can to try to help us seniors, because sometimes it looks like we're being neglected. Now, any time, Katie Wherever has built that for the seniors, and any time you got weeds, you know that Miss Harris, Miss Miss um, Smith, is as tall as me, almost as tall as me. I'm five feet. That's been years they haven't been doing it. I started cleaning because I thought that it was the building, and they're just trying to let us go. The old people are scared because they think you're going to let that building be torn down. You need parking space. That's what they're saying. You you would just have a shuttle to bring them downtown. I do want you to know though that. You need to help us to get a bus to go to the hospital at the bottom of the hill also. We must take two buses if we go to Mercy, and it's at the bottom of the hill. Now, uh, Lavelle, when they were talking about the buses, and I see you got cars, you got all kind of stuff for the students down Fifth Avenue. Build, I mean, where they stay. And he was work, worrying about the buses. Didn't I say you were making it for the children, for them pit students or College students, what about the seniors? You know, it's a, it's a shame. It's a shame that we don't have a bus to go to the bottom of the hill. I can do it, but there's a lot that can't. And you know, the first thing they say, access, we have to pay for that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Next speaker, please. Seeing no other speakers, we will now move to the roll call. The clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Cockeo, Ms. Gross, Mrs. Harris, President Kraus, Here. Mr. Lavelle, Mr. O'Connor, Here. Mrs. Kel Smith, Here. Mrs. Strasberger, Here. Reverend Burgess, Here. five members present. Thank you very much. That takes us to Finance Law Committee, which I am the chair. We have a new paper. Bill 2020, resolution further amending resolution number 863, adopting and approving the 2019 capital and 2019 CDBG grant program and the 2019 through 2024 capital improvement program by amending various CDBG program line items, adding J.D. Edwards financial information and authorizing the subsequent agreement for operation administrative expenses, maintenance, purchase of equipment, and or rehabilitation of neighborhood facilities on behalf of the residents of the city. Motion to approve, very, very brief discussion. Is there anybody here? Welcome. Good morning. David Thanks. Hutchinson, Assistant Director, Capital and Asset Management for OMB. Good morning. Whitney Finsturm with OMB Community Development. Thank you. So, just very quick question. Uh, there's no financial impact on this reorganization. It's not listed here. If Correct. There is. It's budget neutral. We introduced legislation a couple weeks ago to establish a kind of public record baseline for what we had submitted in the annual action plan. These are just changes from over the summer from different council offices and the mayor's office. All technical in nature. That's all I needed to know. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. I'm sorry. Could you repeat that? Sure. We did legislation authorizing the 2019 CDBG program, I think, two weeks ago. With that piece, we wanted to make sure that we were presenting the record that we showed to the public for the annual action plan in the spring. With this piece, we're capturing all the changes that were directed from council offices and the administration for ULOs over the summer. Okay, just for 2019. 
Correct. Thank you. Any other conversation? See no conversation. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those are nay. Um, next bill, please. Bill 2021, resolution further amending resolution number 796, adopting and approving the 2014 capital budget, and 2014 CDBG grant program, and approving the 2014 through the 2019 capital improvement program by reducing refinished gym floor by $64,072.33, splash zones by $20,146.00, 47 cents, an increase in ramp and public sidewalk programs by $84,218.80. Can you read the companion bill and then page two, I think it's 2023? Bill 2023, resolution further amending resolution number 816 by reducing park reconstruction by $10, pool rehabilitation by $10,000, an increase in ramp and public sidewalk by $10,010. A motion. Motion to approve. Need a second. Second. Any conversation? Ms. Harris. Yeah, where is this going to be? The ramps and sidewalks sidewalk. and and do you know where you're taking it from? Yeah, the, the I mean it says I know what it says, but it doesn't say where. Yeah. Director Ricks can speak to the locations for the ramp and sidewalk, but just to kind of recap these three pieces, 2021, 2022 in 2023 are all part of an annual exercise we do. We have a timeliness deadline with HUD in January 31st each year. They check our existing balance. We're not really supposed to have more than 1.5 times our current allocation. So every summer we check in with our departments to see if there's any slow moving projects or money we should reallocate towards something more pressing. So in talking with DPW, those were the projects that they identified that they didn't think they'd be able to spend before um, that January 31st deadline. And it's, it's hard because the money's got to be out the door spent. It can't just be committed. Okay. So in doing that, we, we reached out to um, other departments to see if they had pressing needs. And that's when we spoke with Domi about sidewalk needs. Okay. I just want to find out where they're doing the ramps and the public sidewalks. I know that there's quite a few all over the city that need done. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So, Karen Ricks, the director of the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure. So, these uh, ramps and sidewalks will be concentrated in two neighborhoods, um, just so we can get an economy of scale in trying to um, uh, really address these. And so, they're in the Homewood uh, okay. neighborhood and in the Hill District. Thank you. And was that 22 to? Because I think is it that a companion bill also, Reverend? I'm sorry. I think 22 is it's also. It's the other bill. We're, we're, we're on 221 and 223. Right. I guess he was also answering because it's part of, 22 is part of it also. 22 is part of what? We do an annual check with the departments to see if there's any slow moving projects for city yeah. funds. Yeah, but these, the, those two similar right he said 21 22 23 are all one you want to read 22 if you'd read 22 please bill 2022 resolution further amending resolution number 858 Thank by you. reducing emergency sheltering by $13.40 an increase in ramp and public sidewalk by $13.40 a motion motion need a second second all right all three are on the table Ms. Harris you have the floor no. I don't need anything else. Thank you very much, Ms. Smith. I'll just say that um, we had a meeting yesterday uh, for the legislation I put in place uh, for um, trying to address the blight in, in the, you know, the public and private property in the city. And part of the discussion were sidewalks, that we should not just be cutting down weeds. There are sidewalks that are on city-owned parcels that are in you know, really horrible condition, and yet we're citing residents for their sidewalks. So. Part of that came up, so I think that we should make sure that you're in part of that discussion for the, the next meeting, which is uh, the first week in October. So I'll send an invitation. But just so council members know, it is a discussion for other neighborhoods, not just these you know, two neighborhoods. Any other conversation? See no other conversation. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Nay. All right. And so that takes care of this one, this one, this one, and 
this one that takes us to the next bill 2024 Bill 2024 resolution authorizing the issuing of a warrant in favor of Curtin and Hefner for professional legal services and expert advice regarding building owners and managers litigation in an amount not to exceed $15,122 and 72 cents. Uh, need to hold for executive session is it such a so motion moved. need a second. second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Close this name next bill, please. Bill 2025, resolution authorizing the purchase of certain property by the city in the lieu, in lieu of eminent domain in order to advance city's proposed permanent closure of Timberland Bridge. Need a motion. Motion to approve. Need a second. Second. Any conversation? No conversation. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Close this name. Ms. Harris. Timberland Bridge, which one is that? I have no idea. Here, I'll look it up. She's coming back. Go. <laughs> I was going to look it up real quick. Even though we've already approved this, we will use discretion to go back and have a conversation about where the bridge is. Sure. Ms. Harris? Uh, so, mm -hmm. Karina Ricks, the Director of the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure. The Timberland Bridge is a small span bridge uh, just off of Route 51. So, it's in. Uh, oof, which neighborhood? I'm a, I don't know that off the top of my head. It's it's in uh, Councilman Coghill's district. Yeah. Okay, and uh, I don't believe I received the papers. They said that they inspected um, the Swindell Bridge and the Shadeland Avenue Bridge. Can you get that for me? Yeah, I'm sorry. I apologize if you haven't gotten that no yet. No problem. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Thank you very much. That okay. takes us to the invoices. Need a motion for the invoices. Motion to approve. Need a second. Second. Any conversation about the invoices? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, there's nay. There are P cards on the table, and I need a motion for the P cards. Wait, wait, wait. One abstention on the invoices. So no. One invoice. I'm sorry. There is both P cards and interdepartmental. Transfers will do the P cards next. Well, we'll do the inter inter their next. Interdepartmental transfers instead. They're on the table. Need a motion. Second. Any other conversation? No conversation. All those in favor, since five by saying aye. aye. Opposed is nay. There are P cards on the table. Need a motion? Approve. Need a second. second. Any other conversation about the P cards? No conversations about the P cards. All in favor, since five by saying aye. aye. Opposed is nay. Abstain. One abstention on the P cards. Thank you very much. That brings us on a fastly moving agenda to the Public Works Committee. Ms. Kale Smith is the chair. Bill 2059. Resolution granting under Ice Factory Limited Partnership, their successors and assigns the, license, the privilege and license to construct, maintain and use at our own cost and expense, per three protective bollards and constructing a new stormwater tap in at 143rd Street, 6th Ward in the 7th Council District. Need a motion, Motion Mr. to approve. Need a second. Second. Any conversation? No conversation. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed is nay. We have a deferred paper. Bill 1637, resolution authorizing the mayor and director of the Department of Parks and the Department of Public Works to enter into a lease agreement with the Pittsburgh Ballet Theater for a portion of real property located on Liberty Avenue between 29th and 30th Street. Need a motion. At the request of Councilwoman Gross, a motion to hold for one week. Need a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposers nay. Next bill, please. Bill 2002, resolution vacating a portion of Gatlin Street, 10th Ward, 7th Council District. Motion. At the motion, at the request of Councilwoman Gross, whose district this is in, uh, motion to hold for one week. Second. Please second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposers nay. We have a new paper. Bill 2035, resolution amending resolution number 507, vacating a portion of Colwell Street in portions of our way in the third ward, sixth council district of the city by extending the expiration date of the payment from the property owners to the treasury of the city from 60 days to 105 days from the effective date of the resolution, August 1st of 2019. And a motion. Ms. Motion. Motion to approve. <laughs> This makes the payment to the city commensurate with the actual closing of the development. Thank you very much. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposers nay. It takes us to the last committee of the day, the Government Affairs Committee. Bill 
983, resolution authorizing the mayor and director of the Department of Finance to execute a quick claim deed and any other necessary or appropriate documents, agreements, and instruments conveying as is all of the city's rights and interests, if any, in designated city-owned properties to the URA for consideration of $1 each, <coughs> contingent upon the mayor and director of the Department of Finance, first entering into a corporation agreement with the URA, setting forth the rights and obligations of the city and the URA relating to these initial conveyances, and further setting forth the rights and obligations of the city and the URA relating to the subsequent disposition of these properties to third parties. Mr. Carter, what's your pleasure? Motion to hold three weeks. Need a second. Second, uh, second the, but I'd like to make a comment. I, we've been holding this bill for uh, almost a year, and so let's get passed. whatever the issue is, yeah. let's address it and, and uh, move the bill forward. So we're not holding it for so long. I have not um, looked at the. I have. I don't know the issue, but I will. I will now um, collect and find out what the issues are and participate. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, um, there's a motion to hold for three weeks. All those in favor, since five by saying aye. Aye. Opposers nay, that takes us to the next bill, please. Bill 2000, resolution adopting plan revision to the city of Pittsburgh's official sewer facilities plan for Light of, Light, Light of Life Ministries at 234 of Ugly Street. Motion to approve brief discussion. Second. Second. Uh, this is in Councilwoman Harris's district. Um, she has a couple questions uh, still remaining, but the developer uh, and their party is going to reach out to her hopefully in the next couple days and solve this. If not, we can recommit on Tuesday. I know the Councilwoman's going to abstain today, but I think we should move forward given that we'll get hopefully get that information by Tuesday. Great. Thank you. And, and since Light of Life is such a worthwhile organization, I, I, I'm thankful that you're allowing it to move forward. Yep, happy to support. All right, um, there's a motion to approve on the table. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, there's nay. Abstentions? Abstentions? Councilwoman. Councilwoman. Abstentions? Abstention. Thank you very much. Next bill, please. <laughs> bill 2028. Resolution authorizing the mayor and Office of Management and Budget to renew the non-exclusive -exclus license agreement with the Federal General Services Administration for the Veteran Affairs Highland Drive Campus for limited use and conduct due diligence pursuant to the application approved by the Federal Emergency Management Agency and the Department of Justice to acquire the property for law enforcement and emergency management purposes. Need a motion. Motion to approve. Need a second. Conversation? No conversation. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposers, nay. Next bill, please. Bill 2029, resolution adopting plan revision to the city's official sewer facilities plan for the 201 Arsenal Phase Two residential land development project. The motion. Motion to hold one week. Need a second. second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposers, nay. Next bill, please. Bill 2030, resolution adopting plan revision to the city's official sewer facilities plan for the St. Peter's Residence Project located at 500 Lockhart Street. A motion to approve. Second. Any conversation? No conversation. All those in favor, send five by saying aye. 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 Opposed, there's nay. I think that exhausts the agenda. Um, um, there is uh, a meeting, a couple of announcements this afternoon. With sessions beginning at 1.30 and 2.30, Council will hold a briefing with PCTV relative to the community needs assessment. Next Tuesday, September 24th, with sessions beginning at 1.30 and 2.15, Council will hold a briefing with the Finance Department relative to audit contracting um, information um, statements from the members. Ms. Harris. Yeah, I uh, got quite a few phone calls. Um, that everyone didn't stand for the pledge, and I would hope that yesterday. I, I don't know, but evidently it was seen when they were watching television. So I'm hoping if everyone does, if there's people that don't want to stand for the pledge, Pledge of Allegiance, that uh, they remove themselves from the room until we pledge because people have died for this country. Well, you, when you become king of the world, you can tell other people what they, how they, how they decide to show their patriotism. But until then, people have the civil right to decide how they are going to, um, 
how they are going to behave. Well, that's unfortunate for those that have died for this country and to make us free. So I will, suge I will suggest a little segue. Um, yesterday, um, the Pittsburgh Gender Equity Commission released a study uh, called Pittsburgh um, Inequality Across Gender and Race. And it found similar to things that we've been saying. They've just documented some of the things that we've been talking about, that in similar cities, black women in Pittsburgh face higher rates of maternal mortality and poverty, along with lower rates of employment and college readiness. Black men face higher rates of occupational segregation, homicides, cancer, and cardiovascular disease. The study finds out automatically by just moving from Pittsburgh uh, African Americans, their life expectancy would go up. Just by moving from Pittsburgh, their income would go up. Just by moving from Pittsburgh, their educational opportunities for their children would go up. Um, this is not new. And so we have in Pittsburgh, although we don't like to talk about it, but in study after study after study after study, this region is one of the worst places for African Americans in the United States for a city of its size. Study after study has said that and expressed it, and we continue to go as business as usual as, so, as if it is not one of the major problems of this city, it absolutely is. And so how do we solve it though? Um, there are some who say that we should um, only focus on uh, those communities because the majority of African Americans actually in Pittsburgh live in African American communities. And so, some would say that. Um, I think that although I hear that, it is misguided because it won't happen. I think instead what we say, when we say that we want to lift up Homewood or lift up Bell Suv or lift up the Hill, we're not saying this in isolation. I join with my colleague, Councilwoman Smith, when she talks about how um, south of the river has not gotten invested in. So when we talk about focusing on Homewood, what we're really saying is we're gonna focus on Shady Side and Homewood. When we say we're going to focus on Sheridan, what we're really saying is we're going to focus on Squirrel Hill and Sheridan. We realize that the affluent, uh, I'm not there yet, but we realize that for our affluent communities, they're, because of their own internal resources, they, without any government help, will do well. What we're really saying is that while we are encouraging that development in our affluent areas, at the same time as a city, we're also going to focus on those communities who do not have resources because the way this city will grow is we must grow together. And so, um, I, and then I'll say this though, every pain is legitimate. Every, every mother who loses a child, just to, to, regardless of, of race, is significant. Every po poor person growing up in poverty, whether they're black, red, white, green, yellow, it doesn't matter. It's, it's significant. However, study after study has says poverty is awful in Pittsburgh, and being black and poor is worse, right? In, in, for every, in every category, when you add race, it becomes worse, whether it's poverty, whether it's educational level, whether it's income level. And so, and so um, it interests me sometimes that we, we have a new flavor, and I know you talk about this, but there's always a new flavor of the month, right? That, that women are being oppressed, and then there's, you know, and, and, and that's awful. They should not be. I've taught that for 30 years. That, you know, we have an issue sometimes with gay and lesbian, um, transgender people and their discrimination. That's also awful. All of these things are awful. But when you add race to it, it gets worse. And so um, as a city and as a council, we have to remember that is the situation in our city. We are the tale of two cities. We are part of Pittsburgh that's very affluent and doing very well, but there's another part of Pittsburgh, particularly black, brown, and poor, that is struggling. And we must, I'm just suggesting, we always keep that in mind. I think the mayor is right that I think the one Pittsburgh plan can help. But I think there are things that each of us can do as a city and as a council. We will get better, but we will only get better together as a whole city. And thank you for that moment. I just, the study was so striking when I read about it um, last night. I wanted to at least share that with council and with our viewing public. So I, I'm thankful that you brought it up, but I think that um, I would, I want to make sure that I mentioned that 
although I think we need to do something, I think oftentimes when government gets involved, that's when things get worse, not better. And I mean, I think when we think the answer to uh, people living in poverty is making sure we have more affordable housing or, or more low-income housing, instead of lifting people up and making sure people are employed, making sure people are getting the resources, making sure mental health um, in social services are being uh, distributed fairly and evenly across the city. I don't think we're really helping people. I think we're doing a political agenda. I don't necessarily think we're helping people. When we're saying that banning guns is the answer to all violence, when we see an increase in, in the stabbings in the city <coughs> and other things, um, I don't necessarily think, and especially when you know that those laws, enforcement of those laws particularly affect the African American community with enforcement, we're not really helping people. We're really just making a political statement. I think if we really want to help people, we have to have an open, honest conversation <coughs> about what lifting people up really looks like and what that is. And for me, if I was in, in living in poverty, and, and believe me, I have before, I've been, I've been a widow and with two small kids, um, so I know what that's like. So for me, I'd want help to lift me up, not just to keep me down and suppress me. So I think that we have to have real conversations about what that help really looks like. And we did call for a post agenda about race relations in the city, and maybe you and I and Councilman Lavelle can schedule that and, and work on that. Um, Be glad to work with you. Because I think it's a conversation we have to have. What does lifting people up really look like in the city of Pittsburgh? Be Thank welcome you. to have that conversation. Anyone else? Mr. Lavelle. Very briefly, um, I actually couldn't disagree with Councilwoman Smith more. Um, the history of this country is government getting directly involved for the upliftment of white Americans and directly depressing and passing laws that have done nothing to keep black and brown people in this country down. That has been, that's the history of government in our country. We can look at our that's city and also see the direct influence of government. I look at my own district, um, the Lower Hill. That was the direct result of government deciding to destroy and displace 8,000 families to literally dismantle the black economic class in this city. And I believe it's then government's job to be very intentional about rebuilding that and correcting those decades of harm. So I believe government should absolutely be involved in rectifying the situation that government caused, in, caused and created. And I will say my family was one of those families displaced from the hill, so I appreciate the comments. Ms. Harris. You said you were going to say North. I didn't hear that. That's your job. So, yeah, I, I do. I, it's, it's everywhere. It's North, South, East, West. And um, we don't talk about this, but what makes um, the black community in Pittsburgh different is that it is very segregated. And that's also the problem, that in um, other cities, they're more dispersed. In our city, the majority of African Americans live in African American communities. And unfortunately, almost every African American community in Pittsburgh is primarily poor. And so- Can I please just make sure I say, excluding Chartier City, which is a, a gem of a neighborhood, predominantly African American, the highest home ownership in the city of Pittsburgh. I just wanna make sure I point that out. And the second one is probably Lincoln, I think it's Lincoln Limington, it's the second highest uh, home ownership in, in the city of Pittsburgh. Um, yes. But I think that's, it's, I yes, I just think it's, that's the work. I look forward to the conversation. What bothers me sometimes is when we suggest that that's not the work, right? When we try to suggest that there, that there are other issues that should now take precedence and that we should pause the work of rebuilding low and moderate income communities in particular black communities, because there's always a new agenda where that problem is consistent. And so there'll be a flavor of the month, another victim, another group that we come in, and, and people have told me, okay, you know, Rev, and I've heard this, so I'm not saying things that people have not said to me privately. You know, Rev, you're always arguing about poor people, and particularly poor people and African Americans are poor. Well, there's this new thing that that's, it's not their time. But as long as they are in the worst condition in Pittsburgh, it is their time. As long as they have been discriminated against, it is their time. As long as the social data, the sociological data says they are trailing their other counterparts of, of Asians and, 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 and um, of Asians and Indian and every other group, it is their time. And so if, if and I really, 
don't care what other people say, I'm going to continue to talk about it. I've talked about it for, for 30 years, 35 years as I've been a pastor. I've talked about it for 12 years. Again, it's not exclusionary. When we say black, black lives matter, we're not saying other lives don't matter. What we really are saying that, but black lives matter too. Because oftentimes that gets ignored, that gets, that gets overlooked. Um, and so I, I'm very passionate about it. All lives matter, all kids matter, all communities matter, but the Bible talks about doing things for the least among them. And in Pittsburgh, the least among them are African Americans living in African American communities. It is our moral, our religious, and our, our, our democratic uh, responsibility to uplift those communities. And I will advocate for them, I'll work for them as long as they want me. Um, and even when they don't want me, I'll work for them because I'm not going anywhere, you know? My, my, my plot is already, my wife already bought our plots in Homewood Cemetery, you know? And so we're not going anywhere. I'm going to be here saying this for as long as I have breath. And then I have four children. Hopefully one of them will stay in Pittsburgh and continue the work when I'm done. So I, I just need to sometimes say it because I don't say it all the time. And, and, but it, it, is, it is striking that we have report after report. I, I went to go see Cornell West. Last week he was in town and I, at a small gathering, he gave a lecture about how race still matters. And they talked about how blacks are in this region, how African Americans are in this city and the, some of the worst statistics in the country. And yet we, we, whenever we don't make that a priority, shame on us. Stop, Ricky. All right, okay. yes. I and the North Side needs more development. Well, not, not just development, but um, there's a lot of poor areas, and there's a lot of mixed poor areas. And if you take a ride around, just as you said, you'll find the neighborhoods with all their streets paved and the alleys paved, and then you come to north, south, east, and west. Parts of the east that have not together. been taken care of. Erica. So I don't pretend to, um, uh, I have, I'm under no illusions that the suggestion I'm about to make is going to solve all of the, the very serious and heavy issues that we're discussing today. But you know, one thing that's true is that we, we're blessed with neighborhoods, with 90 neighborhoods and with nine council leave districts. It. It. And I promise I'll be quick, two minutes. Well, less than two minutes, um, but um, but that also does tend to divide us geographically and into hills and valley neighborhoods, and you know even there are even neighborhoods within neighborhoods. Um, I know before I was on council and before I was working on council, there was a bus tour that went all, all around all the districts that every council member participated in with their staff. And again, I don't. Okay, well, let's try to get 100% participation this time. I suggest, you know, I'd be happy to work on logistics with uh, council president, whoever else wants to help, and maybe arrange that again, because I think that um, while we owe um, a certain amount of money and, and investment and, and work to our own districts, we also are more powerful if we're keeping the entire city in mind as we're making decisions, especially around the purse strings of the city. Um, we can be really strategic if we have perhaps other people's districts in mind when we're making decisions about investment. So, um, and I think that if we have a, a, our eyes open to what are the possibilities are in other districts, we can also communicate that back to our constituents and our community groups as well. So it's one approach. Um, Again, if people are interested, I'd be happy to help the, with the logistics and pull that together before the weather gets too cold and we can I'm just going to say something real quick. I just, um, well, I think we have to have this conversation, and I'm happy to work with you on the post agenda, and I love the idea of the tour. I want to say that all of our neighborhoods deserve investment, regardless of whether they're wealthy, regardless of whether they're predominantly white, regardless of whether they're, they're uh, you know, very diverse neighborhoods, and regardless of whether they're African -Amer predominantly African American. We, they des our residents deserve our services delivered, and and we need to do better, I think, in terms of delivering um, some of those services to a lot of our residents. But I don't want to sacrifice one neighborhood versus the other. The idea should be, how do we lift all neighborhoods up together? That's it. We agree. 
Thank you. Need a motion to, to um, approve the minutes and adjourn the meeting and excuse the, oh, need a motion to excuse the absent member, adjourn, uh, accept the minutes and adjourn the meeting. The move. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposers nay. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.